Good morning, church. I encourage you wherever you are just to engage worship today. Yeah. 
Amen, amen. Good morning. We are so delighted that you have joined us this morning at yes. New Hope Church. And how you doing? I'm great. How great are you? Great morning. I'm doing good. So I love that song, though. Yeah. Every word will be accomplished. That's right. The gates of hell will not prevail against That's it. Right. Amen. That's right. Amen. We're so glad that you're here. And I got to tell you, I'm a little bit tired of the church being empty. <laughs> I'm yes. ready to get a back to tired. our people being here. Yes. We love you. We miss you so much. We can't wait to yes. give you some kind of a hug. We're not <laughs> sure when that will be, but we can all hug one another. But that day yeah. is coming. Yes. Hey, we know that some of you are watching for the first time, second time, third time. And uh, how can yeah. we connect with them? There is a blue card link somewhere on your screen in the comments. Just click on that. Fill that out, and we will connect with you. All right. Well, yeah. we want to uh, welcome all of you that are here on uh, Facebook. There are people yes. that are tuning in through our website, through YouTube, and now through Cozy TV, Ooh. Mediacom. Yeah. Uh, we're so glad to be a part of your world this morning. So, hey, let's pray together. Let's kick yes. this off. Go back into worship, yes. and uh, let's join our hearts and our lives together today. Lord, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for your grace over our city, mm. your grace over our region, over our nation. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing you. and all that you will continue to do. Thank you for this time together. Jesus. Anoint it, bless it, use it this morning for your yes. purposes, for your glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. 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 Welcome to New Hope Church. Let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Amen. We just want to declare this morning that Jesus reigns. We declare today, God, that you reign above it all. Every situation, every circumstance, every emotion, every worry, you reign above it all. And we just declare that today, God. We lift you up on our praises today, God. Thank you, Lord. Who oh, you worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. The reign of darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light forever under your dominion. You're the king of my life, the king of my life. You reign above it all, you reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name. Jesus, you reign. Above it all. And on the cross, the work was finished. God, you poured out your life just to give us new life. And now the lips of the forgiven. Hear an anthem arise, cause Jesus, you're alive. Yes. And you reign above it all, you reign above it all. And over the universe, and over every heart, there is no higher name. Jesus, you and let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song. Sing hallelujah to the everlasting one. There is no higher name. Jesus, you reign of it all. Who you reign above it all. sing this. You sent the darkness to run out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. 
You sent the darkness run out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on my highest praise. You sent the darkness run out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned on my highest praise. You sent the darkness run.
is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. Yes, you do. You reign above it all. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so we can say, peace be still. You hold our hearts. And we can declare to our hearts, peace be still. And we can find rest and we can find peace in the Lordship of Jesus Christ over our lives, over our families, over our tomorrows. We declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that he reigns above it all. And because he reigns, because he's seated on the throne, I can be still and I can rest and I can speak to my emotions and I can speak to my heart and I can speak to my mind and I can say, peace, be still. Peace, be still, because Jesus, you are Lord and you reign.
You are my strength, you are my anchor, and you never fail. You are my hope, you will deliver, Emmanuel. You are my strength, you are my anchor, you never fail. You are my hope, you will deliver. You are my anchor and you never fail. You are my hope, you will deliver. And you will. You are my strength and you are my anchor and you never fail. You are my hope, you will I love that song because Emmanuel means that God is with us. And the reason I love that is because no matter, no matter what we're going through in life, no matter what you're facing right now, what we can know is that God is always with us. In fact, the word says that he never leaves us and that he never forsakes us. So we just declare that wherever you are right now and whatever you're going through in your life, that you can have a confidence, you can have a, an assurity, you can have a, 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 just this resident sense of his anointing, his love, and his presence in your life in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Thank you, worship team. Wonderful job. I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, and uh, we are uh, continuing in our series called the Victory Series, and if you have your Bibles in front of you there in your home, uh, we call this Pajama Church, and so if you uh, are there and you have your uh, Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua, and we're going to look together in Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. And uh, we're just going to jump into the Word this morning. And I entitled this, The Walls Came Tumbling Down. Joshua chapter 6 says this, Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho. I've given you Jericho, I've given you its kings and all of its strong warriors. So you and your fighting men should march around the town once for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. And on the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. And when you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. And then all the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight 
into the town. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for the anointing of your word. We thank you for the favor of your word. We thank you today that, Lord, you enable the word to find its root in our hearts in Jesus' name. We thank you that the the life of the seed of the word of God produces the harvest of the anointing. I thank you today that your word will come forth uncompromised and unhindered, and I thank you that it will produce the life, the love, the victory of God in each of our lives in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So what I know this morning is that all of us have been in a place where we need a breakthrough in life or, or maybe in a particular circumstance, maybe something that you find yourself facing right now in your life. And in, in the life of Joshua, I love this story. In fact, I really love any stories about Joshua. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. And in the life of Joshua up to this point, life really hasn't been too bad for him. In fact, Joshua was a part of the leadership team that saw Israel cross the Red Sea and get to the other side, and all of the enemies of Israel were defeated. What an amazing time that was. What an amazing story that was. And something that Joshua would put in his resume is that, man, to be able to say, I was there. How would you like to be able to sit down with Joshua in eternity and and hear him and others tell those stories? Well, when Joshua crossed the Jordan River to come out of Egypt into Israel, that itself was an amazing victory. And it was very obvious that the hand of the Lord was upon Joshua when they crossed that river. And so at this point in his leadership, so far he's doing pretty good. In fact, here's Joshua. He takes over after he's the successor of Moses. And so he takes over, and now he's the primary leader. He's the pastor, as it were, of this church called Israel. And so he's in a place where he's learned a lot from Moses, and now it's his turn. And and actually things are going pretty well. The poll numbers are pretty high. People are encouraged. And the advancement is moving forward, that they've they've seen the Lord bring them out of of Egypt, and now all of a sudden it's their time to go into the promised land, and God is doing something significant through this man named Joshua. The truth of the matter this morning is this, is that the real test still stands before him. Not that the others weren't a real test, but this first initial city that he must conquer in a series of cities before they can step and take the promised land as their own, is this town called Jericho. Now, I think most of us know this story, but Jericho is a a city that is heavily fortified. Jericho is a city that is, is, is guarded and had been guarded. In fact, it's actually one of the oldest cities. It still exists today. In the times that I've been to uh, Israel and when we go over uh, into different places, I always, we we sit there, we can't, not camp, but we spend the night near Jericho. And I always think of this story, and it's it's a heavily fortified city, guarded, it was protected by fierce warriors, and and as one of the oldest cities in the world, there was a reason why it was so well protected. And Jericho would not go down without a fight. Many had tried and many failed. Because what the people of Jericho didn't count on was that the strength and the strategy of a commander that they had never faced before was leading his people into this battle. And I'm not talking about Joshua. You see, this was the commander of the Lord's army. And he is the Lord God Jehovah. And what I can share with you this morning is this, is that, is that God had a plan. He didn't just bring Israel to this city called Jericho. He brought them and he had a, a supernatural plan. And that plan exceeded the wisdom and the ability of man and of his enemies. God has a plan. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know what you're facing in your life. But I want you to hear me very loudly and very clearly. Someone said, hearing you loudly is not an issue. I want you to hear me clearly. God has a plan, no matter what you're facing in your life right now. And so my question to you this morning would be this. What is your Jericho? What is it that is standing against you right now? What are the things that you're facing in your life? 
I can tell you this much that so far in this, this whole time of this virus issue is that we've already seen God do amazing things. We've already seen God heal bodies. We've seen God provide for people. We've seen God restore lives and families are coming back together. And I tell you, we are on a, the verge of a divine reset, not only in our nation, not only globally, but in the church of Jesus Christ. We are seeing the divine reset of God in our lives. But what is it that's standing against you this morning? What is it that, that looms before you and seems that it cannot be defeated? You see, Jericho would not be able to withstand, and I, and I use this word intentionally, this phrase intentionally, and I want you to get this. Jericho would not be able to withstand the determined advancement of the Lord against it. Would you get that? That, that God has for you whatever you're going through in your life right now, God has for you a determined advancement. He knows exactly where you are. He knows where you are right now. And God not only knows where you are, but God knows where it is that he wants to take you. And what I love about the Lord is that he knows exactly how to get me there. You see, these were, listen to me this morning, these were covenant people. And they, they had a, a covenant with their Lord, and so do you. Not only was Israel a covenant people, but you are a covenant people. And God's promises over you are yes and amen. Would you hear that clearly? Would you hear that this morning, that no matter what you're facing, God's promise over you is a promise of a covenant, and his covenant promise over you is yes and amen. But now listen, this was not going to be a test of, of Israel's military strength or prowess. This is not something that they're going to have to get their act together and, and, and get all of their military strategies together. This was going to be a test of their trust and a test of their confidence that they have in the Lord. You see, the willingness to follow the voice of God. What was being tested here? What is it that might be, might be tested in your life? Whatever it is that you're going through, I can tell you this, is that it's their willingness to follow the voice of God. Even when in the natural, it makes no sense. That, Father, I, I, I will do what your word tells me to do. I will do what I hear Holy Spirit saying to me, even if it doesn't make sense, even if it's not logical in the natural, I will do what it is that you are telling me. So what is it this morning that we can learn from this general? What is it that we can learn from this, this company of people who are walking through this? Number one, God's directives always trump the standard. God's directives always trump the standard. We well, see, th this is the way that it's always been. You see, listen to me this morning. God doesn't always do things the way they've always been. His, 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 his directives trump the standard. You see, Joshua is a guy who learned a lot through Moses. He found himself in what I like to call the, the university of observation. He learned humility, he learned patience, he learned obedience, and probably like a lot of us, Joshua not only learned those things, but he also learned what it was to, to not be obedient. He's watching things happen when, when different leaders around him chose not to be obedient to the Lord, and he saw the consequences of that firsthand. But more importantly than that, and I want you to get this this morning, he, he learned several things that I, I want to share with you. Number one, things aren't always what they appear to be. Would you get that? You see, the, 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 the Bible says that the enemy is a master deceiver. He takes things and, and he makes them appear to be one way when in actuality they are something different. And what you can know this morning is that things aren't always what they appear to be. Number two, he learned that God's word always trumps the lies of the enemy. I want to encourage you in that this morning. The word of God, God's promises over you, God's covenant promises over you always trump the lies of the enemy. And I want you to hear me clearly. Here's the third thing that I believe Joshua learned, and I think that you and I can learn, is that, that faith is always greater than fear. Faith is greter than fear. We talk about, I, I've been doing a, in, in the last several weeks a, a time called the Word University. And one of the things we've talked about is the, the, a, 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 what a natural fear is, what a, a, the nature of fear. 
And all of us have that natural nature of fear. But that's the point in time that you have to deal with the nature of fear. Because if you don't deal with the nature of fear by virtue of living out of what I call the God-man part of who you are, if you don't deal with the nature of fear out of the spirit of truth and apply the directives of the word of God to the nature of fear, the nature of fear will become a spirit of fear. And when the, when the nature of fear becomes a spirit of fear, it becomes rooted in what the Bible says, the Greek word is the word suke. It becomes rooted in your psyche. It becomes rooted in your mentality. And it becomes a part of your mind, your will, and your emotions. And once the spirit of fear becomes rooted in, in your mind, your will, and your emotions, it begins to produce symptoms. And, it, and will, it will produce things in your physical body. And Job said this, he said, that which I greatly feared has now come upon me. So what does Paul say? Paul says that when, when I'm dealing with the nature of fear, that, 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 that natural thing that caused me to be alarmed, what's he say? He says, I bring those thoughts into captivity to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring those things into captivity. What's he doing? He's dealing with it in the realm. He's dealing with it supernaturally by faith in the realm of the natural so that it doesn't become rooted in who he is. I hope that helps you this morning because faith is always greater than fear. The next thing I think that Joshua learned and is a really good lesson for us is this, is that obedience unlocks the supernatural. Obedience unlocks. Obedience in faith creates a portal by which God can release his purposes among you. It creates a portal. Obedience unlocks the realm of the supernatural. Your faith unlocks the realm of, the, of God's supernatural provision for you. It unlocks the, 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 the realm of his supernatural healing in your body. You see, faith always is greater than fear, and obedience unlocks the supernatural. I love to say this, and I love to encourage people with this because we are a people of the covenant, is that covenant overcomes the curse every time. You see, we're not people of the curse. We're people of the covenant. We're people of the blessing. We're people of the anointing. We're people who walk in the divine, supernatural favor of God, not because of what we've done, not because we have it all figured out, but because of his great love for us. And here's the final thing that I think Joshua learned, and then I want to share a couple more thoughts with you, and we'll close this morning, is this, is that if God is for you, listen, nothing or nobody can be against you. Now, so we see this man, Joshua, coming against this fortified city that had never fallen, massive walls that had never come down. The city had never been penetrated, and he stands, and, and, and the Lord gives him a strategy. And it wasn't a military strategy, it was a priestly strategy. The Lord gives him a strategy, and, and it was, watch this, it was the priestly anointing that led the way. It was the priestly anointing that led the way. You see, there were, in fact, men of war that were engaged in this conflict. And they were men that were, were ready and willing to fight. But these men of war, these men of, of, of natural ability, these men who had been trained in the strategies of, and the conflicts of war, these men who understood how, how to navigate the processes of war, because of the call of God upon Israel, these were men that were going to have to stand down on this one. You see, and the, the priestly strategy, why, why, why a priestly strategy? Why not a military strategy? And I want you to be encouraged in this today with whatever it is that you're facing, whatever Jericho that you're walking through right now, I want you to be encouraged in this. The priestly strategy demonstrated, please get this, the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. Whatever it is that you're facing, you can choose to get it all figured out. You can choose to, to put your strategies in place, but at the end of the day, you have to know this, the battle belongs to the Lord. One of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs chapter three, five and six, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. You see, Joshua, in this circumstance, 
Joshua in this situation was going to have to, was going to, have to step aside and, and lean not unto his own understanding. And I believe this morning that there are people that are listening to me right now and the Lord would say to you very clearly, step aside and stop leaning on your own understanding. You're trying to get all this figured out and you can't figure it out. And because you can't figure it out in, in your own sense of strength and, and wisdom and understanding, it's causing you frustration. And the Lord says to you very clearly, get your hands off of this. Let me be the Lord of your battle. You see, I can tell you what, what I know about Joshua this morning is that if he had to depend on his own military strength, he probably was going to be in trouble anyway. Even though Israel had a, a fighting army, even though they had men who were willing to fight and ready to fight and ready to engage in conflict, there was absolutely no way in the natural, hear me, there was no way in the natural that they could depend upon their own military strength and take Jericho. He was going to be in trouble. Can I be so bold this morning to say this to you? So would you. If you depend upon your own strength, if you depend upon your own strategies, if you depend upon your own wisdom, you're, you're going to be in trouble. There was three specific things that I think Joshua needed in this, in this situation. If Jericho was going to fall, he needed supernatural favor. He needed, he needed supernatural breakthrough, and he needed a supernatural strategy. And as God always does, he came through. He gave Joshua a supernatural favor. The Bible says that you have favor, watch this, both with God and with man. So God has given to you supernatural favor. If Jericho was going to fall at the hands of Joshua and the, his obedience to the Lord, he was going to have to have a supernatural breakthrough. And God has given that to you in your life, and he gave him a supernatural strategy. You see, because God didn't lead Joshua to the doorsteps of Jericho and said, now here, boy, go figure this thing out. God already had a plan. God already had a favor. God already had a breakthrough. God already had a strategy. And so it is with your life. God already has a plan. God already has a breakthrough. God already has a strategy. And like I said earlier, he knows exactly where you are. He knows where he wants you to go, and he knows how to get you there. And the way that he's going to get you there is by virtue of his favor. The way that he's going to get you there is by, is by virtue of his breakthrough and by virtue of, of his strategy. So God already had a plan to defeat Jericho, and God already has a plan for you. Finally, this morning, I want to talk about this thing of the shofar and the shout. Nobody had ever seen this kind of strategy before. Nobody had ever seen anybody do something like, like this. That, wait, wait a minute, you're going to literally, wait, Joshua, I don't, I don't, I don't think you get this. We're, we're talking about Jericho here. We're not talking about some little town that, that is isolated and, and you can just storm in and walk in and take over. We're talking about Jericho, the most fortified city in all of the world. Nobody just walks in. and In fact, nobody even takes Jericho. And, and you, you're telling me this morning that you're going you're gonna to put your priest and they're going to walk around it seven times, seven days. They're going to walk around this thing and then they're going to blow the shofar that you heard at the beginning of our service. It's exactly what that was. They're going to blow that, and then the people are just going to shout, and you think that by virtue of the shofar and the shout that the walls are going to come down? I'm telling you, that's exactly what God did. The strategy of the Lord was the shofar and the shout. And I think that we have to learn from that. I think there's some things that God wants to teach us in that very principle of the shofar and the shout. Let me just take a moment and tell you about the shofar of God. The shofar calls people to worship. The shofar announces the presence of a king. The shofar declares war and it assembles the congregation. And so the priest then would, 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 would blow the shofar. And when the priest would blow the shofar, the sound of that shofar in and of itself was the heavenly proclamation of the presence of the Lord. Announcing that the Lord is here. Announcing that his presence is among us. And I want you to know that the presence of the Lord always brings the, the favor of God, the breakthrough of God, and the strategy of God. No matter what you're facing in your life. What do I need? Do I need a bigger bank account? Maybe. 
Do I, do I, need, a, do I, do I need a financial planner? Do I need a, 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 a doctor to devise a, 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 something that's never been done before? What we need more than anything else is the presence of the Lord in our situation. And so the priest then blew the shofar. And by virtue of that proclamation, let me call that a prophetic proclamation. By virtue of that prophetic proclamation, angels, angels were dispatched. Time stood still. And the people stood in their place. And at the order of the Lord, at the strata, the divine supernatural strategy of the Lord, watch this, the prophetic voice of the Lord was released. There's a time to stand still. There's a time to be quiet. There's a time to stand down. There's a time to be in a place where you just let the peace and the presence of the Lord abide. But I want you to hear me very carefully this morning. There's also a time to be the prophetic voice of the Lord. There's also a time in which the ecclesia, the, the, the church, the kingdom must stand up. And I believe that time is now. In this community, I believe that time is, as you see, the enemy is deceptive and he'll, he'll, he'll slip little things in that have long-term impacts and residue for, for decades to come. And there's a time for the people of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, to, to become the prophetic voice of the Lord. And as you're tuned in this morning, I, I, I want to share this with you, and I, and, I, and, I, and I want to encourage you to become the prophetic voice of the Lord over your family. Be, 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 that, be, be that one that's cultivating your supernatural and your divine convictions. Cultivate your convictions. What is it that God says about you? What is it that God says about your family? What are the purposes of the Lord that are aligned in your favor? What are, what are the things that, the promises that God has spoken to you? Begin to decree those promises. Begin to proclaim those promises. That now is the time. This is the day of God's supernatural favor. This is the day of God's supernatural breakthrough. This is the day of God's supernatural strategy over your own life. That you rise up in the morning. And, and you begin to declare over yourself, be the shofar of the Lord over your own life, over your family, over your life, over your community, over your nation. You see, the Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violent, the kingdom of God, take it by force. It's not a time to shut up. It's not a time to be quiet. It's a time to speak up. It's a time to, to walk in declaration. It's a time to walk in prophetic proclamation, to be the voice of the Lord. Let the, I wrote, this is the way I, I pray, let a, let a righteous, uh, demonstrative, a righteous, demonstrative anointing fill your mouth. What is your decree? What is your proclamation? You see, the walls are coming down before you. The walls are coming down right in front of you. And this is not a day to, to be quiet. This is not a, an hour to shut up. This is an hour to speak up. And I prophesy life over you. I pro prophesy victory over you in Jesus' name. I prophesy spiritual breakthrough. I prophesy supernatural strategy over your life in Jesus' name. And I want you to hear me this morning. The very thing that the enemy has meant for your harm, the very thing that the enemy has meant for your demise, God is going to take that thing and he's going to redeem it for his purposes and for his glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's always an honor to come into your home, to come into your life, to be a part of your world. We just speak and declare the blessing of God over you, over all that concerns you in Jesus' name. We always like to close our services with what we call the priestly blessing. And so wherever you are, I just want you to hold your hands out in front of you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God lift his countenance upon you, and may he give you his peace. And may you live all the days of your life walking in the authority that is yours. And may the walls of Jericho that have kept you from your blessing come tumbling down 
in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen, amen, and amen. And remember, church, we walk by faith and not by sight. Have a great day. I want to thank you so much for coming and being with us. During our service, we'll come together and we'll say it's time to receive the offering. And and we encourage people to get happy. They're applauding. So right now in your house, we're going to receive an offering. This is the time that you have opportunity to give to the Lord. And it's been incredible watching people give. And it tells me it's because you trust God. You've been trusting God no matter what anybody says about this or, or what the economy is, your hope and your trust is in God. And we want to thank you so much for your giving. So right now, somebody give somebody a high five because you have opportunity to give today. So there's four ways that you can give. They're right here somewhere on the screen, the ways that you can give. You can give online. You can mail your check. You can come and give it in the giving door, or you can go online and all kinds of ways that you can continue to put your trust and your hope in the Father. So thank you so much for being with us today. Let me pray for you and pray for what God's going to do in your heart and in your life today. Father, thank you so much for making us your people that can make a difference. It's your people that can live in the peace that you've given us. So Father, right now, as everyone's preparing to give their offerings, God, that you would bless them a hundredfold because their hope and their trust is in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. We look forward to when we're all back together. But until then, continue to be the church. God bless you.